Hey everybody, welcome to Turkey. Now we're gonna do a little bit of a recap today because as you guys know, we're traveling with our two dogs. We have Katie over there that just ran away and we have Arya. And we're gonna tell you how we have gotten them to different countries. Arya has been to 10 countries, Katie's been to 11. So when we started our journey, we did not start with Arya as a dog. She was um, a rescue from Ecuador. So we started, for those of you that have been following the entire journey, in the beginning we had a beautiful little chihuahua named Gracie who was 15 years old when we started our travels back in March of 2020. And then we also had our nine-year-old Chorky, uh, Katie, who is now 11 years old, um, to start our journey. Yes. So first off, let's talk about our initial time leaving the U.S. to go to Ecuador to bring our two dogs from America. Mm -hmm. So Julie worked mostly on this. So uh, Julie, tell everybody what we had to do to jump through hoops to bring Gracie and Katie to Ecuador. Okay, first of all, I wanna put a disclaimer out there that uh, you need to do your own research in addition to this, but this is uh, as we recall and then as I have uh, recently researched. In Ecuador, they do require a whole lot. They, they require distemper, canine hepatitis, para influenza, parvovirus, leptospirosis, and the rabies. And the rabies, you could not have the three year that the United States offers. It only can be the one year. So please make sure you understand that. They also require internal and external parasite treatment and that has to be done within 21 days of your departure. And these dates are extremely crucial. We actually know of people who have not been able to get their pets boarded because they didn't do the proper amount of days or weeks. Um, in addition to all of these things, you have to have an international health certificate and that certificate, certificate cannot be done any earlier than 10 days from your departure. Again, that's 10 days from your departure. Do not wait beyond that. Do not uh, think, oh, I have two weeks with this certificate because you'll just waste your money and the dog or cat or ferret cannot board the plane. Um, so these are really crucial, important things. But again, a disclaimer that you need to do your own research and your dates need to be perfect. Do not... Uh, trust anything outside of what you read um, on the USDA website or um, even PetTravel.com is an excellent resource. Now, regarding the USDA, did you tell everybody that the vet has to be a USDA certified vet? I neglected to say that. So not, that not your is, neighborhood vet. That is correct. They must, and, and, and did, in fact, in fact, for them to be able to do an international health certificate, most likely they're going to be a USDA certified vet because that's not something that just every vet does. And if you're lucky enough, find one that can do the digital versions so that you are not shipping things to, let's say, Miami uh, FedEx to wait for the seal to get FedExed right back to you because as we know, things can get lost in the mail and we wanna make it as simple as possible for these kind of things. Yeah, just if you're in the US, plan ahead. You're probably not gonna be able to use your regular vet to do the certificate. Right. You're gonna to have to find a vet with that USDA yes. approval. Now, for those of you coming from somewhere else in the world, you can pretty much go to regular vets, but for some reason in the US, if you're gonna take that dog somewhere to get the international health certificate, it's gotta be a USDA Bit. Yes, and Ecuador happens to require a whole lot, a whole lot more than most of Europe. So um, you really, really have to be cognizant of what you're going to have to do. It is going to be a lot more expensive because a lot of these uh, vaccinations are quite expensive. Now, we lost Gracie in Ecuador. She was 15 and a half years old when she passed away. Broke my heart. Um, you know, it took me a while to get over it, but uh, Julie twisted my arm to rescue a dog while we were in Ecuador. Um, 
And that's how we ended up with uh, Arya. I don't know if you've seen the rescue video or if you saw the video when we said goodbye to Gracie, but those videos are in our library. But we rescued Arya. And so she was a little bit different than Katie because Katie had been in the US and now we're bringing her back to the US. Um, because before we went to Europe, we went to the US for three weeks and then we went to Europe. So we had a dog now that we were rescuing in Ecuador uh, from the start. So yes. we had to get her completely um, vaccinated and Europe requires a microchip, not the US. So we had to get her microchipped in Ecuador. Katie had already been microchipped. And then we um, had to take her to the US and then both dogs over to, um, to Europe. We are often asked about flying with the dogs. First off, we don't like having to put the dogs in cargo. And Arya was able to ride in the uh, inside of the plane on the way from Ecuador to the US as well as the US to Europe. She can't do that now. She weighs more. Uh, so unfortunately, we can't put her in cargo. Um, so that led us to some other things that we did in the in Europe as far as getting around. She was picked on a lot when she was in the shelter in Ecuador. And so she's got some quirks. She's afraid of being in the pitch black and her being in a 12 hour pitch black cargo hold she'd be a basket case. So we are trying not to have to put her into a plane if we don't have to. And just to note, if we were trying to do this from Ecuador today to get to the United States, to get to Europe, we would not have been able to do anything with her. Or for that matter, uh, Katie, because they spent time in Ecuador and it's a high rabies country according to the United States. Now that is set to expire at some point in time, but please do know that if you bring your dog to Ecuador, and there are a hundred countries on the list, it's not just Ecuador, that you could run into that problem. I wanna make sure you're aware of that before uh, moving abroad and then having to come back to the United States and then you would not be able to bring your pet back unless you do an appeal. Yep. So after a three week stint of going from Ecuador to America. Um, we got uh, the chance for Ari to run on the beach in Ecuador one day and two days later she was running on the beach in Florida. Yeah. Um, we were uh, flying out of New York. Uh, when we drove up from Florida up to New York and we flew from New York direct to Belgrade, Serbia. And Air Serbia was great, uh, yes. but right now you can't bring a dog into the cabin with Air Serbia. Um, we're gonna give you a link for uh, in the video description for pettravel.com. And when you go in there, you can look up different airlines requirements for flying in cabin or as cargo and get some great information there. That's where Julie was going for a lot of her research was pettravel.com. Mm -hmm. Again, link will be in the video description. Um, so to get from the US to Serbia, we actually stopped at a vet in Tennessee, Tennessee to get their paperwork updated. And we got through the airport pretty well, but what did we have to have to go to Europe? Uh, well, our vet was, uh, I found her um, through a lot of phone calls. We were able to find out she could do the international health certificate and she was significantly less expensive than a couple other vets that we found in Knoxville. So um, Serbia, as a matter of fact, this vet was shocked how simple the process was. She couldn't believe it. Literally, uh, they needed the microchip, which they already had, and they needed a rabies shot. That was it, and the international health certificate. She had said that was probably by far the easiest international health certificate she had ever done. Um, in contrast, I think we spent about 600 hundred for uh, Ecuador per dog and there uh, with uh, Knoxville we spent about 250 a piece so we were quite happy um, you know it's, they just don't require much it was a very simple international health certificate if you're gonna bring your dogs to Europe I highly suggest considering Serbia they were great 
the airlines checked the international health certificates, you know, simply. And once we uh, uh, landed, there was no one to even check anything as we left. Versus in Ecuador, we were stopped and they made us go into the uh, agricultural office mm -hmm. and they checked every it, document. It was, it was tough coming and going in and out of Ecuador with our dogs. Yes. Um, but Serbia, yeah, piece of cake. Um, now, once you're in, once we were in Serbia, we at that particular time we we were renting a car for 90 days at a pop as we did some travels. But every time we crossed the border, when we left from Serbia to go to Macedonia or to go to Montenegro, and then Montenegro to go to Bulgaria, every country along the way we would have to stop at a vet get our paperwork updated to cross to the next country that we wanted to go to, um, to show at the border. Now, the thing is, nobody ever wanted to see the documents, nobody ever asked, but we had them because we knew if we didn't do it, that's when they were going to ask. Yeah, it was a chance we didn't want to take. So, if you're in Serbia, and you can cross into Bulgaria, and just to say, this is 2022, we were doing this in 2021, COVID um, had so many restrictions in Bulgaria. We were not as uh, allowed as American citizens to cross the border. Otherwise, Serbia would have been our stop. We would have gone straight to Bulgaria, gotten the EU pet passports that he will show, and it would have all been cleared. But at the time, uh, they were not going to reopen the borders till May, and this was in January. So, <laughs> We uh, highly suggest, if you're in Belgrade, drive to Sofia, find a vet, get your EU pet passports. I believe both pet passports ran us about 40 euro. Um, Once you have these, you don't have to do all that paperwork no. in other countries. This is the gold standard. So you have your EU pet passports. You can use these to get you into Turkey, yes. into Montenegro. Croatia. Okay, but I, I have to say there is a caveat here. Certain Western European countries also require international health certificate type things. So please do your research before deciding, oh, I'm going to take my dog from Montenegro to Austria. Now, here's another thing. With Serbia, they don't require the rabies titer test. I'm going to tell you, if I were you, if I were in the United States, yes, it's expensive, don't get me wrong, get your rabies titer test done. Reason being, if you're in Montenegro, for example, it is considered a high rabies country. If you want to cross from Montenegro into Croatia, then to Slovenia potentially, you may not be allowed to do it without the rabies titer test. And the rabies titer test requires, they, they get their blood test. It has to go to a specific lab. I believe Kansas City is one. Um, Katie's was done in Paris, France. Um, and I believe Aria's was done in Kansas City. So yes, it's gonna run you 300, maybe even more than that. And you need to do this timely. It needs to be done 90, I would give it 120 days before departure. You have to get the test back and it has to be 90 days on the calendar once the test is back for it to be valid. So it is for the lifetime of the pet in, the, in, in Europe, except for Ukraine. Ukraine asks for it every 12 months. Now, when you do your pet passports, you'll have your information here on their vaccinations. So you'll have your updates as you have your dog and you're traveling. Mm -hmm. But um, as we've traveled, we, we bought our car in Bulgaria. We have a whole other video about how Americans can have a car and drive in Europe without having residency somewhere. So if you're looking at coming, check out that video if you wanted to stay in the, in the continent for a long period of time to drive around. Um, but the reason we did that is we don't wanna to have to jump on a plane to go from country to country or try to figure out, can the dogs get on a bus? Can the dogs get on a train? So for us, it was so easy just to have our car, mm -hmm. get the girls in the car, and we drive to where we're going. And the only time we were really ever asked for documentation for the dogs when we crossed the land border was going into Ukraine. And uh, you know, God bless the people in Ukraine. We love Lviv. It's a shame what's going on there, but um, that was a, a great country to visit. 
But outside of the, that one time crossing um, the border. Serbia into Hungary, um, we were okay. asked. I actually believe they just wanted to see the pet passports because they, we mentioned something about pictures in the pet passports and they had a great little uh, time looking at their pictures and, and then checking out what the dogs looked like. Yes. So we get questions all the time from viewers. It seems like every time we're in a new country, we have people asking us, oh, you're in Bulgaria. And what was it like to fly into Bulgaria? Or, hey, you're in Montenegro. What was it like to fly into Montenegro or fly into this country that you're in? We haven't flown into all those countries. We yeah. drive across the borders. So we flew into Serbia, piece of cake to come on into Serbia. We were asked recently about Turkish Airlines with pets. I have been told, again, this is not coming from us having the experience ourselves, but uh, I have been told Turkish Airlines is good with pets. Um, and so, you know, it, it is a consideration and KLM also KLM is supposed to be outstanding air Serbia they have to go in cabin they uh, they don't allow cargo that they have to be smaller yes to get into the cabin so again that's why Aria can't do what she did before yes okay so we hope that this was helpful um, and that some of you will be able to glean a little bit of knowledge here uh, again that pet travel uh, link will be in the video description and the fs.usda.gov um, website which gives the U.S. Department of Agriculture vet links. Is that what, what we have there? Uh, well, it actually is a fantastic site. You go in there, you select um, about your what type of pet you want to bring in to another country and you select the country and then after that it gives you the information for that specific country. Okay. So anyway, everybody, thank you for watching today's video. As a reminder, if you haven't already, please subscribe. Don't forget to give the video a like. And Julie and I, we're traveling the world with our two dogs, trying to see what it's like to live in other countries, other places. We're sharing our experiences with you and our expenses. And by the way, vets in other countries are a lot cheaper than the U.S. Yes. So until next time, have a great day, everybody. Bye-bye. Okay.